Welcome, everybody. Uh, it's awesome to have you join us at All Night for special XR Startup Showcase. I hope you're all healthy and keeping it sane with all the craziness around. Uh, we're here today to celebrate seven XR Startups that just concluded AWE Academy's six-week intensive course, where we help them prepare for fundraising by refining their product positioning, market strategy, business model, and open some doors to mentors, investors, and partners. They're now ready for their close-up. It's going to be a great meeting. My name is Orin Barr. I'm the founder of AWE and Super Ventures. And I have one question for you. Are you ready to get augmented? Yes. Absolutely. All right. So by joining AWE Nights, you actually join a global network of AR professionals that meet in over 20 cities around the world. Currently, it's operating mostly online. And you're welcome to check the link right here on the slide. I know we're all missing the good old days where we could meet in person. And since it feels like we're getting close to that, AWE is vowing to make a big comeback at AWE USA this November in Santa Clara, California. And I can't wait to see you all, not as holograms, but as humans in the same room. And now it's, it's a great time to start submitting talks, becoming an exhibitor, nominating your product for the Augies, you know, the good stuff. And until then, the AWD community has a lot going on. So if you want to connect with XR professionals, learn and get ahead in XR, here's what's up. Uh, next week, we have All Night on XR Collaboration as a teaser to Charlie Fink's workshop on March 20th. And the following week, All Night on XR Fitness. Uh, we're also going to start this class that we just concluded, uh, fundraising prep for XR startups later in March. So get ready to sign up. And since we're now part of this incredible community, let's get social, all right? So our hashtag for today is going to be All Night and XR Startups. Let's see if we can get it trend. And uh, you may also want to follow our Twitter account for the latest news in AR and VR. Definitely check out our YouTube channel with the largest collection of videos about AR and VR, including meetup recordings like this one. And for a weekly digest of the latest in AR and VR, Every Friday in your inbox, sign up for the weekly newsletter. You can find it all on our website at awxr.com. So we had a really great cohort uh, for this class, including startups from Japan, Germany, France, and the US. We've had uh, pre-revenue companies raising for the first time and companies with over a million in revenue that are getting ready for their Series A. So you see a variety of use cases from consumer to enterprise, from infrastructure to apps and from games to actually saving lives. Uh, this is the first introduction to some of these startups to the AWE community. So let's give them a very warm welcome into the AWE community. Remember, they're counting on your feedback, even if it's a little critical, but make sure to be kind. And they're here to make some new friends in XR. So we're really counting on this community to help these startups get ahead. All right. Uh, in terms of the uh, questions and feedback, feel free to post it in the chat. We will have time probably for one or two questions for each pitch, and I will pick some of the questions and present it to the founders. Before we start, special thanks to my co-instructor for the course. She's been an inspiration to the class and to me throughout those six weeks. Uh, and way before, give it up for Adora Udoji. Thank you, Adora. You are so welcome. It's always an honor to work with you, Ori, all the time. In all these years, I always um, look forward to your thoughts and to your action more so. So welcome everyone. Um, I think these are some extraordinary teams. They're working on really special applications and I look forward to um, hearing and seeing what you all think. Please feel free and we encourage you to uh, comment in the chat area if you um, there are things you like about it, if there's some constructive criticism around how they're expressing themselves and and their, and their company, um, we wanna hear all of it. So thank you so much for coming this afternoon. And again, look forward to hearing your thoughts and Ori, always, you're the man. And I'm happy you're to go the, spatial. You're the woman, thank you, Adora. And by the way, a new cohort is starting soon. So if you are an AR or VR startup founder, especially if you are a female founder or person of color and looking for help in refining your pitch and getting access to mentors, investors and the XR community at large, please sign up today. We have a especially early bird that will end this Friday. So sign up today. 
All right, now let's meet our contestants. Our first team is about nothing less than saving lives. I want you to give it up to the founders of Fire Vision, James Lynch and Michael Ferreira. Take it away, guys. All right, thank you. Good afternoon. I'd like to introduce everyone to Fire Vision, an augmented reality platform for industrial fire protection and risk management. Fire Vision allows our industrial clients to access vital information when and where they need it. I'm James Lynch, the founder and CEO of Fire Vision. Mike Ferreira, our chief operating officer and myself have each worked for over 20 years in the fire risk and safety industry. Over that time, we recognized a serious lack of coordination and organization of fire protection and risk information at industrial facilities. Since April of 2019, we've been bootstrapping Fire Vision as a solution to that problem. In addition to our consulting background, we have substantial experience leading enterprise software development teams and developing various fire protection technologies, bringing products from the R&D phase to commercial release. Mike? Industrial facilities across a range of industries have to address a range of hazards, including fire, explosion, toxic chemicals, and occupational safety hazards. Fires alone result in over $1 billion in property losses annually in industrial facilities. These hazards present to facility owners the need to manage risk, which includes life safety risk, property risk, and environmental risk. The costs associated with risk management are significant to a business owner. To address risk, an owner ha basically has to answer three questions. What are my hazards and liabilities? Will my fire protection and safety systems work as designed? And can emergency responders limit the extent of damage? To help manage this risk, both before and during an event, there are lots of stakeholders involved, from risk managers to insurance carriers, emergency responders, and regulators. These stakeholders generate information across a variety of formats and platforms that are often difficult to access. Accessing this information quickly can minimize costs associated with risk, which is a significant pain point for business owners. We've developed Fire Vision to address these problems. Please enjoy this short video. Whether you are a site owner, first responder, fire protection consultant, maintenance contractor, insurance inspector, or the site fire marshal, Information on a site's fire protection and safety features and hazards is critical to your job. This vital information is also critical to life safety, property, and environmental risk management. Sharing of information, such as emergency response plans, safety data sheets, inspection, testing, and maintenance documentation, design drawings, and fire and risk assessments between key stakeholders is essential. Fire Vision is a platform for distributing and visualizing the vital information, where you need it, when you need it. Fire Vision is an app for mobile devices that uses augmented reality, secure cloud storage, and machine vision to identify and display relevant facility features and information. This information is overlaid over the real-time image in the Fire Vision viewer, utilizing AR icons. www.firevisionar.com. Fire Vision Viewer layers information to allow access to the most vital information first and has a range of uses on site from incident response, inspection testing and maintenance, insurance audits, and employee training. Use of the software addresses many of the emergency response and facility management issues that have been known problems in industrial facilities. So let's say you're an operator of a large petrochemical facility where a chemical tank catches on fire. Fire Vision will allow site risk managers to immediately access and engage the site's emergency management plan. Site staff can quickly identify any critical safety system impairments, and the arriving fire department can choose a fire extinguishing agent, depending on what's on fire, and to locate shutoff valves and other safety equipment. By enabling situational awareness and rapid response, Fire Vision will minimize the extent of damage, regulatory fines, insurance increases, and environmental cleanup costs. The software aims to address the fact that the total cost of risk, 
which includes both the cost of losses and the costs of risk management programs, is equal to 1% of total corporate revenues, which equates to trillions of dollars worldwide. The existing risk software market is currently fragmented into four main segments. FireVision aims to consolidate this fragmented information using a common platform. Our business model is a B2B subscription service with fees based on total square footage of covered area. Our target revenue for our first full year of operation is $1.3 million and includes 300 industrial sites. We'll reach our customers primarily through direct client sales to industrial owners and operators and through our long time relationships with fire protection and safety consultants. We thank you for listening and learning about Fire Vision and hope we've piqued your interest. Help us to make the world a safer place and be sure to contact us if you are a potential collaborator or investor. Great job, Mike and James. Fantastic presentation. All right, we have time for one question and it's, uh, it's a simple question. How much money can a business save by using Fire Vision? It's a question from Andrew Asnitz. Uh, well, it depend on the size of the business, um, but you're talking about um, saving through the environmental damage and, and destruction. So if you can minimize the risk, like if you look at an insurance agent, what they do is categorize risk into different sections. And then as you improve your fire protection, that risk will shift over, minimizing your insurance costs. So um, it, it can potentially be millions and millions of dollars for a company. Awesome. Thank and you. And that's not to say anything about the cost of losses, any minimized loss because you've effectively managed your inspection, testing, and maintenance program or made your response uh, actions quicker would reduce any uh, cost of losses should they occur. Thank you, guys. Fire Vision is on fire. There's a lot of questions coming in on, on the chat, so feel free to answer in text. All right, moving on to our second contestant. Uh, you know, one of the most successful sectors in VR has been location-based entertainment. And this startup was able to grow even amid the pandemic during 2020 and is now preparing for a Series A round. Presenting all the way from Germany, give it up for co-founder and CEO of Spree Interactive, Johnny Delgado. Give it up. Thanks, Ori. Um, so hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Johnny. I'm the CEO and founder of Spree Interactive. And Spree Interactive is the Disney of out-of-home multiplayer VR entertainment. So um, you may think, why out-of-home? We are in the midst of the pandemic. Yes, you heard right, out-of-home, because essentially there's a huge opportunity um, in several areas, one amongst them shopping malls, because they're desperate, obviously, after the retail apocalypse to bring users back to the shopping malls. And they need to... Uh, offer experiences which users can't have at home and which are social. And this is exactly what Spree Interactive actually does. So let's move on to the next. So the issue uh, we are trying to solve is on the one hand side, we have a multi-billion um, market opportunity. It's the global attraction uh, market. We're talking theme parks, trampoline parks, shopping malls with the burning need right now. And on the other side, um, actually, we have VR attractions, however, with very limited throughput. So causing queuing lines and actually not being suitable for these out-of-home entertainment venues. So the solution is the world's highest user uh, throughput VR attraction, which provides an ROI within months and not years for the operators. And uh, we can entertain up to 20 players at the same time, whereas our competition can only handle up to eight and let's have a closer look at how our solution actually works. So our mantra is active social fun, which is important. Um, and what we provide is a multiplayer arena scale free roam VR solution. This is a 30 by 30 feet arena and 10 people can fit one um, stuff to 10 player ratio. And we have the highest user throughput, which is, is a key unique selling proposition for the operators in order to get their return on investment within a year. We started in a niche which is six to 12 year olds um, and this has been underserved by other VR attractions and the headsets are safe to use from kids from the age of six onwards and we provide quick play casual games uh, like Candy Crush in VR 
And our biggest investor, the um, European TV broadcasting company, Prozim Z1, invested 3 million into our seed round. And with them, we um, did an educational experience, Mission to Mars. So up to 10 astronauts can travel to Mars and learn how life is possible. Just last week, we announced the award-winning esports title Tower Tech uh, on an exclusive license on our platform, which essentially enables us to cover a um, quite widespread um, different target group. So starting with the birthday party market with the casual games, then the educational content, and then the um, esports content for teenagers and adults and corporate clients. Very important KPI is the 2,500 weekly plays per location. So you can multiply um, a five euro or dollar amount with that and you get roughly the revenue which each operator can make with a Spree Interactive Arena. So we are on the way to achieve 2.6 million dollar um, euros this year. We've installed 15 of these arenas. We have a pretty good customer rating based on 3000 NPS scores. And um, one of our big clients in the US is Urban Air, the franchise organization, which is rapidly growing. Having a look at the competition, we beat our competition clearly by the high user throughput. So this is the single most important uh, feature of an attraction in order to sell more tickets. And uh, the second most important is the affordability, which is 10K per player for our system. We do um, generate um, money by a business model, which is a content B2B software as a service business model. So first year, there's an upfront investment for the hardware, which is around about 100K US dollars. And then there's a annual licensing fees, which entails spree produced content as well as third party games. And having a look at the profit margins, so the first year has over 50% profit margin and the subsequent years, the content business model has a 80% if it's own content and 30% if it's third party content where we have a app store type of business model. The team consists of very experienced entrepreneurs, advisors and investors. And we have um, 15 people in total and they've worked in a variety of uh, big companies. So we've raised already successfully 5 million euros uh, so far, and we are looking to raise 6 to 10 million euros in a Series A in the second half of this year for global expansion. And um, essentially, we're targeting global entertainment chains. We're talking about, um, you know, Dave & Buster's main event, um, Chuck E. Cheese, all these ones. And um, the current cap table is mostly the founders and um, roughly 24% with investors. And I encourage all of you to try out our um, experiences in Europe, in Middle East, and in North America. In North America, we have one in Dallas, in Denver, and coming up after this opening up, it will be New Jersey in uh, Trampoline Park, Rock and Air there. So yeah, I'm happy to answer your questions and thanks for your attention. Thank you, Johnny, great work. So we have, again, time for one question. It's coming from Eric, which is saying, you know, 25% of US malls are about to close within the next five years. So, and, and the retail vacancy is uh, on the rise. So where do you engage customers outside of retail shops? So we sell um, out of the 15 um, systems we've sold in, so far, uh, we've sold um, five to trampoline parks which sometimes are actually living in a retail environment or in a former retail environment. Then we sold five to uh, theme parks, um, which is obviously a different you know, customer segment on its own. And then uh, what we've experienced is high demand from shopping malls who are really looking to invest money um, just to stay relevant in these times. Cool. Thanks very much, Johnny. We're up sure. for our next presenter today. Uh, let's turn our attention now to Enterprise AR, which is one of the biggest growth areas for AR in the past couple of years. Put your hands together for founder and CEO of Factual VR, Hypertunnel. Give it up for Eduardo Nitier. Thanks, Ari. 
Uh, my name is uh, Eduardo Nieder. I'm the founder of Factual VR. We are here to talk about our product, Hypertunnel, teleporting experts anywhere. Organizations are challenged to train and retain staff to perform manual intensive tasks in dangerous and complex scenarios. We build Hypertunnel, an XR software platform to instantly teleport experts from the office to remote work sites, providing training and support. We are the only solution to offer a digital twin of the worksite at the office and an avatar of the expert at the worksite to demonstrate what to do. We 3D scan the remote worksite to build an immersive digital twin that can be stored in a library or it can be scanned in real time. And the VR digital twin provides unique situational awareness to the expert. We also place a corresponding avatar of the expert at the remote worksite, providing unique human-like interaction with the frontline worker. The two locations are then synchronized and augmented using artificial intelligence, creating a shared space where the experts and the technicians feel like they're working next to each other, side by side. In this example, a technician needs help to restore service. The expert is at the headquarters using VR, he is immersed in the digital twin of the worksite, and then teleported to the field using AR. Imagine that power has been disrupted in a factory outside of Milwaukee. Shannon is a new hire stationed there. Yao is a plant manager based in Chicago and needs to walk the new hire through a sequence of steps. Shannon just entered the building. I'm in an electric room. I can see you now. Come over this way. So we will operate over this control panel here. First, can you take a picture of the control panel? Yep. There you go. All right. So here's what you're going to do. Keep pressing. And you reach the green. And then observe the values on this yellow box. As a result, the power in Milwaukee factory is restored quickly while the expert remains in Chicago without spending time traveling and exposed to no risk. As you've seen, the benefit consists of better use of organizational knowledge, reduction in cost, increasing productivity, and better service. We use the power of immersive VR to let experts feel like they are the work set. The expert can walk around, point at things, interact with objects, and get any perspective they choose. We use the power of AR to augment the remote work site with properly placed 3D models and instructions to place an avatar in the site that can show gestures and body language in the right context to show how to do things on site. We deliver benefits that no video conference system can dream of. The enterprise XR application market is experienced rapid growth. Conservative estimates from artillery show a global market of at least 7.6 billion by 2024. And these estimates are before COVID. The use cases that we support represent 3.4 billion and our target industries, oil, utilities, oil and gas and defense represent about 1.2 billion. There is a good amount of competition, but none includes a digital twin at the office and an avatar at the work site. Our main differentiation consists of training computer vision to match the relevant objects, provide an immersive and interactive digital twin at the headquarters, and then place an avatar of the ex expert at the actual work site to demonstrate what to do. We offer a turnkey B2B solution. We provide a VR multi-user simulation classroom as well as VR AR solution for remote support. Our revenue is based on the size and complexity of the work sites, the number of the users and the required service level. We anticipate a typical deal to yield about $400,000 in annual recurring revenue. We receive a multi-year grant from the Department of Energy and deployed a pilot at PSENG, the Electric Utility of New Jersey. We also received the TechConnect Defense Innovation Award as a top new technology for the warfighter in national security. We have a diverse team of engineers and business people with deep technical knowledge and industry expertise. We have been executing together for more than two years and we are the right team to keep pushing forward. That's Hyperton, teleporting experts anyway. Awesome job, Eduardo, fantastic. Now, uh, I see a, a quick question here, um, kind of a slam dunk for you. 
are you scanning the remote site uh, so you can provide access for the remote VR uh, user? Yeah, so, so we scan, we, we have two ways to scan it. We can scan it uh, in advance using laser scanners or scanners like Matterport and have it in the library, uh, as well as we can scan it real time using the, the iOS 12 or the iPad Pro scanner, as well as the HoloLens. All right, awesome, Eduardo. Uh, there's more questions coming up on the chat, so keep answering it and please stop sharing. We're moving on to our next presenter. All right, folks, so an XR cohort wouldn't be complete without an AR game. And this one that we're gonna see next has high ambitions to connect consumers and bring them back to the physical stores. So give it up for the founder and CEO of WinQuest, Christopher Faraguna. Give it up, Christopher. Hey, all right, thank you, Ori. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Chris Faraguna. I'm the founder of WinQuest. WinQuest is an augmented reality treasure hunting app that gives anyone with a smartphone the opportunity to play and win cash and prizes around the globe. So what are the problems we're looking to solve? Well, brands are finding it more expensive to reach target audiences. Consumers are missing outdoor activity and retailers are losing visits from consumers because of the pandemic. Consumers are buying online now instead of visiting local retailers when they shop. So new incentives are needed to encourage pe people to return to local brick and mortar shopping. What is the solution? Well, the solution for retail is WinQuest Win Win plans on driving WinQuest users back into retail shopping with the incentive to win cash, prizes, and discounts with our merchant affiliate partnerships that we will have with our local merchants and brands. WinQuest will reinvigorate the brick and mortar shopping experience through a digital experience in the physical world. The solution for merchants is that WinQuest will not charge merchants to reach users with merchant affiliate ad campaigns until a user redeems a coupon. This is the Groupon model, which is very attractive to merchants and brands because there's no ad spend to get their product in front of people. So the solution for WinQuest users is we're giving them a, a chance to win coupled with a free AR experience and we're getting them outside to have a, a good time. So here's a video on the WinQuest Augmented Reality app and a demonstration right now. Welcome to WinQuest, a fun new augmented reality treasure hunting app for your mobile device that gives you the chance to win cash, prizes, and discounts on your favorite brands and stores. It could be anything, cash, a new car, an island getaway, but you gotta play to find out. And as you set sail on each new adventure, WinQuest Point Reward System gets you into free raffles as you keep on racking up points, giving you a chance to win even more prizes. WinQuest also gives you discounts on your favorite brands, matching you with merchants and products unique to your personal interests and hobbies. And the more you play, the more discounts you receive from the brands you love. Download WinQuest today and win. When you go into the WinQuest app, you can press on the diamond to see if there's a treasure hunt in your area. If there is, then press start and you will get a clue. Press accept. And it will then take you to several locations before getting to the digital treasure chest. In between locations, there are trivia questions. If you get them right, you can proceed to the next location. If not, you need to wait eight minutes so you can use your loot to get the clues for the next locations. When you get to the final stop, the camera will turn on and you will see the AR treasure chest. When you click on it, it will open and then you click on the prizes that come out of the treasure chest. All right, that's the video and the size of the market for the global augmented reality gaming market is projected to be over 28 billion by 2026. So WinQuest could grab 10% of this market within five years. And we're also looking to impact the global digital ad market, which is a $517 billion market by 2023. And the WinQuest app digital ad platform could grab 1% of that market within five years. We have competitors, but we're the only AR treasure hunt game that connects users and merchants and offers cash and prizes. Uh, we have a patent pending for connecting merchants to users in real time through an augmented reality platform. That's been for in for several years. Okay, and our business model for B2C is the freemium business model and in-app purchases. And then we have uh, a business revenue model for business to business, B2B with merchant affiliate coupons, collecting data with data subscriptions and collecting ad revenue. 
Okay, our tech team is uh, Sweet Cherry Tech. They come out of Manhattan. They built the app, the software, the code, and the back end panel. They will be doing the monitoring and the maintenance as we launch uh, WindQuest globally. Um, some of our team are very experienced in building businesses. Al Demora has successfully built over 15 high tech companies. Vinny Secure, uh, he was a data security advisor for Verizon for the health, uh, their health data and he's on our team. And then we have Sam Hashem, which is my partner in a high-tech battery company that we co-founded uh, five years ago and where it's doing very well. We built it and it's gonna launch into a, a public uh, company within the next year. So we've tested over 60 treasure hunts uh, locally and globally. It's working great in beta. We've gotten really good feedback. Uh, our go-to-market plan where we're headed, we're looking to finalize an agreement we have with a broadcasting network that wants to do an augmented reality uh, game show in Uganda and Africa. They're in several different countries. And then we're looking also in uh, uh, Q2 to do treasure hunts in colleges in the US. So uh, towards the end of the year, we'll, we're looking to expand to East Asia with local strategic partners. Uh, this app and platform took over two years to build with 15 developers. We're very excited about our launch. And thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Christopher. Great job. Uh, we all already have a question for you coming from Elena. Uh, have you considered treasure hunts for education or for team building in enterprises? Actually, yes, because of the trivia part to be modified for educational pur purposes to test uh, what, what people have learned in class and it could be great because we have the back end panel. We know exactly what answers they're giving on the multiple choice questions. So yes, it could be used for educational or uh, military applications for you know field tests and stuff like that. Yes. All right, great job, Christopher. Please stop sharing. Okay. We're on for our next presenter. All right, um, folks, to drive adoption of XR, one of the key requirements is to make it easier for everyone to communicate ideas for new experiences in AR. So here's a startup with a unique approach to doing just that. Calling all the way from France, give it up for the founder and CEO of XR Thinking, Vincent Traster. Give it up. Thank you, Ori. Hello, everyone. My name is Vincent. I'm the co-founder and CEO of XR Thinking. Uh, XR Thinking is the simplest way to design augmented reality ideas. So today, there is no dedicated tool to design augmented reality ideas. If you want to provide something better than just a static storyboard to your client, it will be time consuming, manual, or not accurate. XR Thinking is an online video editing platform that helps creators build better augmented reality designs with all the AR features needed. Let me show you why it's different and how it works. Meet Jordan. He is an augmented reality designer. His workflow is complex and time consuming. He is losing hours manually building static storyboards on photoshops, repeating the same things all over and over. And since it's static and not animated like a real AI experience, he spent a lot of time describing it to its clients. And when starting the development part, he has to do a lot of meeting with his team since it's static, since the storyboard is static, it doesn't give enough information. Jordan could have built an animated storyboard, but this requires skills in tools like After Effects. Next time, Jordan decided to use XR Thinking, the all-in-one augmented reality design platform. He first selects the targeted platform for its project and then selects the video that best represents its use case. He then access to video editing parts with augmented reality tools and features. He can select trackers, insert 3D objects. With the timeline, he manages animation and speed. He can also select and hide objects. Once this is done, XR Thinking generates for him a presentation material ready to be sent to its client and to its team. Thanks to XR Thinking, Jordan increased the production speed for design and development, the customer satisfaction and sales meetings and conversion rate. Augmented reality has experienced a huge growth in 2020, especially with Spark AR, the augmented reality tool from Facebook that grew to 400,000 users in one year. In 2017, already experts from Laval Virtual expressed the need for a tool to design anticipated immersive experiences. 
and we still have the first mover advantage. The number of augmented reality creators will grow from 3.2 million to 9.7 million. Our competitors are AR prototyping platforms like Wireframe or Source 3D and digital product design platform, but none of them is a video editing platform focused on augmented reality design. Because we are an editing video platform, we eliminated the development of a real augmented reality experience, which allows us to bring more value by providing to our users all the augmented reality features available in the market. Since we are a web-based studio, we are easy to access, and we put all our effort to be easy to use. Or today, we can see that the community is asking for it. They are waiting for that all-in-one augmented reality platform to build their prototype and ideas. Some articles that shows how to prototype your experience on Medium have reached more than 1K clap. This is important to connect with the different interviews we conduct. This is not just a need expressed by Jordan, but it's a global and shared by all augmented reality creators. Our business model is a B2B subscription model. More precisely, we are freemium based, which will allow us to reach more users. We are counting on the Spark AR and Lens Studio community as partner to reach more than 400,000 creators. We will also spend a lot of effort in creating content for our community. We will also focus on reaching the makers community by preparing our launch and product hunt. Before we end, I would like you to imagine our world without video editing. Today, it's impossible. Tomorrow, with augmented reality revolution, we will say the same thing about augmented reality design tools. Thanks you everyone for your attention and thank you Ori, Edora and Megan for everything you shared with us during the last five weeks. Awesome, Vincent, great work. Uh, we have a couple of questions already in the chat. Uh, one is how does extra thinking differentiate itself from XR design prototyping platforms like Minsar or Tavori? Uh, the main difference is that they actually create real augmented reality experience that you can try in AR. We don't create augmented reality experience. We uh, build augmented reality experience on top of pre-recorded videos. So actually we are a video editing platform, but we provide tools to design augmented reality experience on top of uh, recorded videos but we don't build augmented reality actually. So that's uh, the things that allow us to, to, uh, act, to, create, to uh, provide to our users uh, every tool they need, like a face tracker, et cetera, that the other platforms struggle to create because uh, it's really hard to build a face tracker today, for example, especially right. when you are using an online tool, a web, uh, a web platform. Thank you, Vincent, good answer. And uh, please stop sharing, we're up for our next speaker. And now we're switching to something for everyone. I mean, who hasn't looked on YouTube for instructions for how to fix something in your home? I know I have many times. So calling all the way from Germany, give it up for the founder and CEO of Buzz AR, Vladimir Beljavsky. Take it away, Vladimir. Thank you, Ori. Hi, my name is Vladimir and I'm here to present Buzz AR, a two-sided marketplace for instructions in augmented reality. Because augmented reality is way more accurate than YouTube, which is used for instructions almost universal. I've spent the last four years as the product owner of the uh, AR repair and maintenance guidance system at Bosch. We worked with world's largest corporate customers and saw firsthand how AR guides can save time and money. Now we are bringing these benefits to small businesses and do-it-yourself hobbyists. With 15 to 40% time savings and the error rate reduction to almost zero, AR is beyond doubt the guidance medium of the future. The information is shown where you need it and when you need it, focusing you on task at hand. AR enables even inexperienced technicians to perform tasks that required a lot of experience before. And with the AR, you can teach people in half the time with significantly less investment in even remotely. Yet we also learned that something is missing. Many manufacturers are, uh, uh, many manufacturers are right now in the process of creating AR ops for their new products. Technicians explicitly asked for a single app 
But the content, uh, for example, for the track engine and the transmission and so on can be downloaded into the same app, not dozens of separate apps from different manufacturers. And they were also disappointed that only a small fraction of required content is available. We estimate that 10 to 15 years will pass until the ER instructions from manufacturers are uh, actually sufficiently available. What we learned from private users is that if they get the right guidance, they would do more of home improvement, assembly of furniture, some repairs of cars, appliances, and handheld devices. So can, how can we help these two user groups? Let's see how Buzz AR works. Let's assume you need a guide for phone battery replacement. All you need to do is find it, claim it, start it. In this specific case, the instruction is more accurate with a printed marker. You see how this hobby technician using our app cannot miss the screws because they are shown on his device. It takes around 20 simple steps to replace a battery without damaging your cell phone. In this assembly example, uh, the app recognizes the 3D object directly and doesn't require a printed marker. Another key part of our ecosystem is a web-based no-code content creation tool that can be mastered in a day or two by anyone. We've created this tool for people without any previous 3D experience. Buzzer is a two-sided marketplace that brings together experts and repairmen. So our business model is mainly based on the commission from the content sales. We plan to start with a 20% commission and we'll adjust if needed. Uh, we will also provide content creation services and we will put ads into free content automatically. Our secondary revenue sources are sales of parts and tools, subscriptions, and premium services such as remote assistance. As I've seen in our product demo, we are creating content for the cell phones and tablets right now. We will launch the platform focusing on this segment first. After that, we'll aim for car repairs. Additionally, we plan to cooperate with do-it-yourself platforms like iFixit and repair video bloggers. Our guides can be directly and seamlessly embedded into other platforms. How big is our market? The global repair and maintenance market was over 600 billion last year. If we keep only the labor part of it and focus only on the waste of time, there is still an amount of almost 70 billion that can be saved with the right guidance. Uh, we are targeting 10% of this amount as a fee for the instructions. Who are our competitors? The primary, primary source for instructions worldwide is YouTube. Far behind are specialized sites like iFixit, eHow, and so on. Jigspace offers AI instructions, but without 3D tracking, which reduces the application possibilities. So our goal is to be more efficient in guidance than YouTube. For augmented reality, guides you through your specific tasks in your environment. Our team consists of experienced managers, developers, and advisors. And for the last four years, we are in a deep dive into augmented reality guidance, which makes us a perfect fit for this endeavor. The product is ready for a beta test, which will start as soon as we have created enough useful instructions to start with. That's it. Uh, please contact us. We'll be happy to hear from you. Thank you. Great job, Vladimir. Looks like folks are already waiting in line to get your product because they hate the 2D instruction guides. Uh, here's a question. What will, be, what will you be doing to try to ensure quality or accuracy of instructional content created by experts? Uh, the uh, question is, uh, has been asked many times. Uh, and uh, it is actually not possible for user-generated content to 100% uh, ensure the quality. Uh, and uh, for example, for the guys on YouTube, uh, the only way to know if the quality was good is to look at the ratings, which we'll have also on our platform. Uh, but uh, to ensure at the beginning uh, that uh, there is uh, no bad quality content, uh, we will review uh, for the first few months of, uh, of working, we'll review uh, the, the content uh, and ensure that uh, at least at the beginning, uh, the content is high quality. Awesome. Great answer, Vladimir. Thank you. And now we're moving to our uh, final presenter today. 
Uh, here's a startup that aims to bring rich interactive AR, you know, the high quality models with full interactions to every device out there without draining or batteries or a bandwidth. Calling all the way from Japan, guys, in the middle of the night, give it up for co-founder and CEO of Mawari, Luis Ramirez. Take it away, Luis. Uh, hi, Ari. Thank you, everyone, for attending. So I'm Luis Ramirez, and I'm the CEO and founder of Mawari. We provide a 3D streaming solution for rich interactive AR apps. AR's promise is to revolutionize the way we work and consume content. However, this future has yet to reach scale. Let me tell you about the elephant in the room. When we think about AR, we think mobile. However, mobile AR today is unreliable, lacks power and scale. There are two big bottlenecks. First of all, smart glasses and mobile phones have limited processing power to render rich interactive 3D content. The quality of the content will never be comparable to a high-end desktop. Moreover, they have serious battery and heat issues when you add 5G to the mix. Another bottleneck is that 3D content is heavy by nature, so the standard way of delivering content is not viable. Users should not download gigabytes of content that will just last for seconds. Moreover, users really don't want to wait for downloads. Mawari has built a real-time solution that renders 3D content in the cloud and stream it to mobile AR devices, enabling rich interactive experiences, all packed into an easy-to-use SDK. Our patent-pending 3D content delivery framework is fully scalable and future-proof. Let me explain how it works. With our platform agnostic solution, developers don't need to modify their current production pipeline. They just integrate Mawari Server SDK in their current Unity or Unreal Engine project and deploy it on the cloud. Then they integrate Mawari Client SDK into their Unity, Unreal Engine, or even WebAR app. And after that, they just configure the connection to the streaming server. Finally, users enjoy a high quality and seamless experience. We have created a new patent pending 3D streaming codec for AR that requires 60 times less power to display high quality content on mobile devices and consequently reduces network bandwidth up to 100 times for comparable formats such as free point view video. We are opening new opportunities for content to be consumed by more devices at a lower cost. We got to this point after intense work with our partners and clients by delivering high-end augmented reality experiences. Let me talk about one success story. KDDI, the third biggest telco in Asia, asked for help with AICO. They couldn't deploy her to their consumer devices. AICO is a real-time AI concierge that has a very complicated backend. Dynamic lighting, high-quality textures, detailed jump very detailed geometry and rich animations that require a high power computer and a high grade GPU. KDDI loves us for enabling AICO to interact with their customers through their 5G network. Finally, users can use Unreal smart glasses for what they were created for. We see a $30 billion opportunity by 2024, our streaming SDK fall into high growth markets. Our primary targets are mobile and health-worn augmented reality apps, but we also plan to expand to the virtual reality apps market. We have identified a 3 billion service addressable market for our SDK in 2024. Mawari is the only cross-platform solution that enables seamless 3D streaming for interactive augmented reality applications. In other words, we have redefined immersive streaming. We have two business models, B2B enterprise, in which we charge a monthly license fee of uh, $1,500, and a B2B2C for consumer apps, in which we charge a 5% revenue share free from app sales. Our main source of revenue today is from B2B licensing. We are growing at blazing speed. We closed our last fiscal year with $1.6 million of revenue, and we are on track to double that in this year. Mawari was founded in the heart of Shibuya, Tokyo. We are a group of experts in computer graphics, augmented reality, network technologies, and entrepreneurship. Through hard work and great chemistry, we have assembled a connected global team with, what, with the necessary experience and skill sets to solve one of augmented reality's biggest bottlenecks. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if there are any engineers in the audience, we are hiring, uh, we need help. So feel free to contact us anytime. Awesome job, Luis. Congrats, man. All right, folks, any question? Luis, how did it go? Do you feel good? 
pretty good. So, uh, so why not use a volumetric capture instead? Well, volumetric capture is not interactive and is limited to human capture. Uh, what we are actually we're streaming is straight from the from the three D engine. So actually, it opens up to opportunities for a lot more other content. So in other words, we actually do stream volumetric, but once it's inside the engine. So th that's why uh, we, I was saying that we don't modify the current production pipeline. We actually help that pipeline to uh, spread to as, as many devices as possible. All right, awesome. Uh, see, there's some more questions coming up in the chat, so feel free to address. This was the, the last, the seventh and last uh, startup presenting today. Um, so let's give a big round of applause for all our presenters today from XR Thinking, WinQuest, Spree Interactive, Mawari, Buzz AR, Factual VR, and Fire Vision AR. Thank you guys, you did a fantastic job. And once again, thanks to Adora for a fantastic contribution to this class. Can't wait to do the next one with you. And remember, next class starts soon. So uh, go ahead to the URL here on the slide and apply today before the early bird discount expires. Adora, anything, last, last words? Just congratulations to everyone. And there's some excellent questions there in the, um, in the chat. And, um, you know, carry on, go forth and, and uh, uh, prosper, as Spock would say. Awesome, thank you, Adora. Again, guys, I mean, our, our mission here is really to help the entire ecosystem grow and especially early stage startups, uh, you know, from pre-revenue to Series A and beyond, uh, we're there for you. So if you need any help, reach out and we'll do our best to guide you, connect you, give you some opportunities to be on stage. Thank you all for joining us today. Really appreciate all the participants uh, from the All Night community. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.